Hi, welcome all to another exciting episode of uh, Candid with Credible. When when someone asks me, do I do I manage a tech company or a product company? My answer to most of them is that we are a tech company focused on delivering the best product for working capital optimization. Who we have today does exactly the same, though. Of course, the difference is that he sits uh, amongst the world's largest trade bank, HSBC's office in India. We have Akash Munjal, senior product manager, uh, who has over two decades of transaction banking experience, uh, ranging from business development to portfolio management to risk distribution to product management, covering both India and Mauritius. And HSBC has been at the forefront of digitization and growth in trade finance under his leadership. And we're really excited and honored to have Akash here today. Akash, welcome. Thank you so much for taking time out to do this. Hi, Nira. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks. So, Akash, you've, you've had a tremendous uh, journey over the last two decades. Uh, you know, you've been a veteran transaction banking, uh, you know, uh, veteran banker. Uh, tell me, you know, just give us a background about your the range of experience you've had and, and your journey uh, through trade finance uh, over the last two decades? Sure. So like many of you mentioned, it's been, a, I would say, an exciting and a transformative two decades of journey Okay, in the transaction banking space. I've handled business development uh, for all sort of corporates, right? Right from a startup to, to large corporates to, to global names, right? Uh, then portfolio management, risk distribution, and lastly, the product management, which I'm currently doing, I think. I think uh, what's what's most exciting about my this journey is that it's a journey of transformation, and not because I chose to transform it, but it's just the, the way the industry has transformed it, right? So probably when I started two decades back, uh, I was a trade finance specialist, right? But like you mentioned, now we are working capital solution provider, and because the industry has evolved so so far, so it's been a great journey both in terms of my personal learning, my professional learning, transforming. Uh, seeing how the you know space has totally evolved where you know probably uh sometime back paper was the only golden source of truth but today we're talking about digitization we're talking about supply chain where actually no paper even flows to the bank we're talking about open account flows completely getting digitized so right. so it's yeah so i think it's been a great phenomenal journey and and you uh, played a very important role akash in digitizing this process and partnering with fintechs um you know over the last few years how has that experience been for you so you know that that piece is very close to my heart. We have been working for almost a year or so, right? Of course. Uh, so I think yeah. See the way HSBC sees fintech. Okay. I think we we view view them as a partner, and we have taken a collaborative approach. Right? I think uh, the way we see it is that you know a solution together with fintech okay, in the banking space and and space supply chain also ensures that we provide the best of the both worlds to our customer right we have to keep the customers in the center and, and then work towards the solution for them so what a bank bank brings to the table is balance sheet its relationship its franchise strength right but what a fintech brings to my mind is the cutting edge technology the nimbleness at which you know you can provide solution if you look at supply chain in specific right i mean apart from the fact that the technology which let's say credible provide I think the entire piece of having coverage of the suppliers, educating the couples, the suppliers about how supply chain works and is delivered to the customer. I think this partnership model works well. I mean, that's no, that's fantastically fair. No, I completely agree with you. I mean, for us, uh, we don't exist without banks. Our entire business model is predicated on partnership with uh, banks such as yourselves. And, and, and that's what makes the partnership so unique that, like you rightly said, that we, we can help bring in uh, you know, onboarding expertise, we can bring in technology. Uh, and of course, we you would bring in all the relationships to a certain extent, and of course, the balance sheet. So yeah, it's a great win-win. Um, and, and that's been the been the story, I think, you know, over the last few years. But but trade finance in general uh, in India has has really transformed over the last decade, right? Uh, and and how, how has HSBC, uh, what has been HSBC's approach to this uh, transformation in trade finance? You're absolutely right, Nita. See, so the way I look at it, it's been an evolutionary change for trade finance, right? Like you mentioned, we are the largest player, trade finance player globally by a factor of two, right? So we 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 sit in an unparalleled position. So what our view has been that a we need to ensure that whatever solutions we are providing to our customer, the proposition that we are providing to our customers are fit for purpose. 
we are looking at you know a futuristic solution so we are we do not look at solution right from you know today what customer is but what we are looking is what the customers will need in future okay so whether it's blockchain which we which were the first bank to do our, our transaction on blockchain platform or whether it's for your open account transaction we've actually gone completely paperless for both your import payment and export authorization i think india has seen a phenomenal change uh so this change i think is possible on account of various reasons one obviously is banks you know taking the step more importantly i believe that the regulators and players like yourself have played a very very important role right mm-hmm. so the entire entire concept of getting edpms idpms digitizing the bill of entry mm-hmm. or taking away you know digitizing at the post i think the, the regulators have done a phenomenal job in india uh and similarly you know the uh, the growth of fintech in in the country Uh, i think the whole process of ensuring that the technology is made available to all the participants in the field at a, at a, at a, at a, i would say ease is something that is that is critical for the entire digitization to to go no absolutely through. and i think i mean you know we don't talk about regulators too much but i think india has one of the most progressive regulators in terms of their uh, you know their thinking towards digitization and their thinking towards adoption of new technologies and i think that's really what's made uh, you know the fintech banking partnership ecosystem so vibrant uh, in this country today and and coming to that you know how how have you seen you, you seen technology play a big part in this evolution uh, you know what are your thoughts on on how technology has transformed trade finance uh, and you know where do you see it going from here so sure. See, so the way I look at it, Nira, is that uh, technology is an all-encompassing solution, right? So it touches all the facets of trade, whether it's about getting you know, the customers to know the status of their transaction, or using IoT to know the status of the documents, or to digitizing the entire piece of trade by using blockchain and you know ensuring that the trade happens faster, or you know processing the I mean the the kind of volumes you process if you don't use technology such as OCR, RPA. The, the 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 efficiencies would be of a different level right so so that's that's important another important aspect that i think which where technology has played a very very crucial role is around the entire aml checks and the you know fcc checks bit around uh, the trade finance now if you look at it trade trade is susceptible to money laundering and and those kind of activity right yeah. and the kind of volumes that we process and the kind of transaction that we entertain i think it's very important for technology to play a great role which it does i am ensuring that we keep the trade clean so so i think uh, technology for me is a is a great enabler but are we at the epitome or are we at the zenith of technology i think we still have a long way to go you know while we have the industry has taken baby steps and we are working towards it whether it's a regulator whether it's the participants like yourself or the shipping industry or the logistics or the banking or the customer everybody but i think there's still a long way to go you know for technology to kind of take up oh, absolutely I, i don't i can't even imagine where it will go from here it's it's just started uh but but yeah the future looks looks extremely promising and uh, it's a great space to be in at this point in time but uh, you know we were talking about regulation akash uh, uh, regulation in india has certainly ushered a new era of of trade finance uh, what what further regulation do you think we can expect uh in this space if any i would not be in a position to comment what further regulations what uh, what we can expect in this space but what i can tell you nirav is i think uh, like we were discussing right india has taken great steps whether it's the you know the factoring act which ensured the uh, you know the entire receivable purchase uh, mechanism is in place or if you look at the trade right which ensures that you you have the liquidity the credit available to the msme sector without even a single paper flowing in through the system right so right. i think the regulators have taken uh, i think have been very very supportive have been very very uh, progressive in this uh, in this aspect as well uh, so we we are regularly working along with regulators industry bodies to ensure that whatever learning whatever you know best practices that we can share with them okay uh, from whatever we learn from other geographies is shared with them and i think Uh, our experience has been wonderful i think they they are keeping the customers at center like always they are ensuring that there is a development in the ecosystem and all the participants are able to grow so i think yeah so it's been it's been great working in india yeah i mean there is a big you know obviously a big push towards uh, the sme msme space and, and making credit available there uh, 
do you see banks such as yourself play a, a larger role in facilitating credit for this segment, uh, especially unsecured credit? Absolutely. So if you look at it, uh, you know, we have a very robust uh, supply, uh, the SME franchise that we have in the country, right? So we are a universal bank. So we have the SME clients, we have the large corporates and we have the global corporates. Uh, given our position in where we are in trade, I think uh, in all probability for any transaction will be at the both ends. So we will know what an SME vendor is looking at or SME customer is looking at. And similarly, we'll know what an anchor buyer, a large corporate or a global name is looking to do at, right? So I think right. these solutions that we develop are to ensure that that uh, these uh, the entire set of uh, customer base is catered to. Again, coming back to the point around technology, right? Today we are using technology to harness uh, the power that it has for analyzing vast quantum of data to see right. that what can be done to provide uh, lending to probably the SME segment in a non-traditional manner, right? So today you right. have uh, a lot of SMEs which are vendors on the new age economy uh, sectors. Okay. Now they, they, they are doing great businesses. They may not really, you know, fit in the traditional model of a lending, which are typically a bank puts in, right? So we are looking at alternate ways to see that, okay, well, how we can, you know, look at providing financing to them using their, uh, probably the transaction history. Now that's a great step, right? Technology is a great enabler for sure. that. Right. Feds is again, like I mentioned, a great example where we are looking to, you know, uh, provide financing to the SME sector supply chain where we have partnered with you, right? Again, right. a great piece where we ensure that the liquidity is provided to the... No, company. absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, as a combination of all of these factors, there is significant amount of capital now being able to flow down to SMEs, uh, which, which earlier were limited because it was typically supply chain programs or dealer financing programs were limited to the top 10% or 20% of the vendor base. Now, uh, all of a sudden, now this has opened up, and and you know your nth level supplier is now able to get access to funding at his bankable rate, which is which is amazing. And 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 for that, uh, a lot of credit to banks like it is BC because they've been uh, you know leaders in 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 adopting to this change and enabling it to happen. So, and of course. Sure. If I, if I can just add, you know, so we, we are looking at the, you know, the entire supply chain, whether it's a multi-tier supply chain we were talking about earlier, right? Yeah. Where we are talking not only about looking at N plus one, but, you know, probably going to the last person okay. standing there and enjoying that liquidity. Level. You're absolutely right. So it's a combination and that brings us to the point of combination of banks and fintechs and ensuring that the liquidity and credit is available to, you know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And especially in times like this, right, and COVID, uh, we have to talk about COVID. Uh, unfortunately, it's the flavor of the of the of the year, I would think. But uh, but COVID's taken a big toll, especially on the SME segment. India's GDP has taken a very hard beating. Uh, what has been your experience as a global bank, right, uh, through this pandemic and through this crisis? Uh, what what impact have you seen uh, on the banking sector in India? Sure. So, so I'll, I'll probably talk about what HSBC, uh, you know, has been doing on this. See, uh, to my mind, yes, the COVID has impacted all aspects of businesses, right? And I mean, obviously, the common life has also got impacted. Uh, the way I look at uh, COVID is twofold, right? One is that it's acted as a catalyzation, uh, acted as a catalyst for digitization, right? right. Uh, so people are now much more. Uh, receptive and the space of digitization is much more faster than probably would have been in the pre-COVID uh, scenario. Uh, but it's important to also call out, call out that banks like HSBC, uh, you know, we took the digital transformation journey some time back. So we looked at our processes and we said, you know, uh, both processes and platforms and said yeah, we have to be future ready always. Uh, so we have taken a massive journey of trade transformation where we are looking at processes, our, our platforming integration with third parties so as so that we are we are future ready right covid has acted as a catalyst to fa fast uh, to, uh, to enhance the pace of this digitization uh, the other piece i think which which banks uh, as a community have done is that they have ensured that there is a liquidity made available to industries which are affected by by covid so i think that's where the all the industry has come together and ensured that uh, as a responsible participant in the industry we are doing our piece of uh, ensuring that the, the business do not get impacted because of the lack of uh, capital available. So I think that's the great piece that banks like HSBC have done. No, absolutely. 
no you're right and and you're right i mean covid has really accelerated digitization across the board i mean whether uh, you talk about large corporates or banks or you talk about even the mid market and the smaller uh, corporates they have they've embraced to uh, a lot of digital app, apps uh, all of us and pretty much overnight and work from home was one big you know big such example how how does it work i mean you know i can understand for a fintech company we are we are pretty much uh, used to technology where we are used to kind of uh, uh, you know working from home as a as a as a policy but for large banks and especially for for a global bank like hsbc what has work from home how has that impacted uh, you know operations business it's, i i mean i can't even imagine how complex that would have been to kind of migrate everything to work from home for a bank well, you're right so I, I think I, I think it's been a very humbling experience if i have to put it that is and i have to give credit to our, our our services team our operations team and the most important is our it team right so they have ensured that the operation is 100% ready even if people are working from home okay so we have uh, and we have had people who have been coming to the office i mean we had our services team to who had been coming to the offices in the entire 2020 so as to ensure that the clients who are anyway facing so much challenges have absolutely taken care when it comes to the banking whether it's the documents whether it's guarantee issuance everything so so i i, I think uh, it's it's like i said it's been a humbling experience it's been a great great challenge which uh, i think all these guys to, to, together have come together to resolve it but my personal views i think they have done a immensely credible job uh, on overcoming these challenges and ensuring that even not even a single customer gets impacted on account of uh, banking operations. fantastic no and credible is a customer of hsbc as well and i can vouch for that as well so it's been it's been a fantastic so uh, from my customer uh, uh, but you know it, it's not surprising hsbc has been a path breaking bank uh, uh, globally and uh, you know as global leaders in trade finance uh, when you when you think about the role that hsbc would play in emerging and developing markets uh, i'm sure it's a very very pivotal and and uh, important role so you know what where do you see hsbc india how has hsbc india contributed to the entire transformation of trade finance uh, especially in india sure so i think uh, see hsbc globally you know is the largest uh, trade bank by a factor of two right we have access to close to 90% of capital goods flow now this puts us in a unparalleled position right unrivaled right. position uh, and we given our footprints are there both in the emerging economies as well as developed economies so whenever a solution or a proposition is being discussed or is being launched uh, the advantage that we have is that we we have the view or we have the uh, feedback from various geographies right so right. our proposition when it's developed is developed taking into account or catering to the various geography obviously become letting be flexible so as to cater to any local nuances right so so that's a great advantage of being a global bank the other thing is that there is always a knowledge transfer so if, if a solution which has worked great in developed economies and that can be developed uh, that can be transferred into a developing economy but i'll also probably call out to you nira that there have been some remarkable work done both in the emerging economy as well as developed economy where the knowledge transfer or the best sharing practices happen so it's 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 always not a a, a one way traffic so it's it's been a it's been a exchange of information across geography and i mean and and this probably coincides the way the trade is now shifting from west to east to probably east to yeah. right so, so so that's been a great uh, uh, learning and again because of the the visibility the the access to the trade that we have and the presence that we have in various geography we have always been able to transfer knowledge from one part of the bank to the other part and ensure that all the solutions that we develop is essentially keeping the customer in center right so it's not about uh, emerging economy or the developed economies yes there is pivot to asia this is a stated strategy for the bank there is a lot of uh, you know investment being committed to asia and india is obviously a beneficiary india has been doing some exceptional work in terms of finance and like i mentioned there have been certain solutions that that probably india has developed and india was the pilot site and we have kind of shared it across other geographies so yeah so there is that but yeah our our, our philosophy is very simple that we have an advantage we have a view we have you know presence in music in, in most of the geography so let's develop a solution key, uh, keeping a customer in the center sure absolutely and uh, you know 
like I said before, I think HSBC's focus on customer uh, has been well known and, and has been the cornerstone of uh, the reputation that HSBC has built in India. That being said, Akash, you um, you know you you achieved quite a few milestones in your in, during your stint in HSBC. What would you say is your proudest moment? Uh, collaboration with Finda <laughs> Credible is obviously top of the list. But I think yeah, the entire journey, like I said, uh, Nirav has been transformational, right? I mean, uh, when I started off uh, uh, two decades back, and and actually keep saying that makes me feel old. Believe me, I come to bank every day to learn a lot of things. I think the entire journey has been transformation. And just to see how you know we have evolved from being a let's say a trade finance provider to a to us working capital optimization solution provider to risk management. To providing solution for the international trade growth, sales, uh, supply management of the of the client. I think that entire journey has been transformation, uh, transformational. So, so the uh, the piece around learning, evolving the way you know along with the industry, and seeing how HSBC, you know, being in the position where it is in terms of trade finance. I think it's more of a responsibility that the bank has uh, taken on itself to ensure that. We not only embrace the change, but actually lead the change, right? So, so that 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 spirit when you imbibe in yourself and do it in your personal working, I think it's it's great to uh, achieve success. And just the you know, I mean, we we were talking to somebody and we were thinking that you know the, how the trade has evolved, and there are three critical components of you look at it: how trade is being done, what is being traded, and where is it being traded, right? So, all these three components, which are a cornerstone of any trade transaction or trade uh, trade uh, ecosystem, have undergone a change. So I think just that journey itself has been very, very exciting. No, absolutely. And, and look, uh, I've worked with you now, Akash, for a little over a year and a half, close to two years now. And I can personally say that, you know, your, the vision you have for, for state finance and partnerships with FinTechs uh, has really enabled this partnership to grow and, and blossom. So I'm, I'll always truly be grateful for that. But, but it also speaks volumes about, uh, you know the transformation that you you were talking about, and 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 you leading the way in in ensuring that that happens. Um, and then you know a lot of young bankers, aspiring bank, Indian bankers who would want to reach the position that you are at. What advice would you give them? What should they be focusing on? And um, you know what would be what would be their path forward? Uh, so I'm not, I don't know whether I, I've reached that position that I'm able to give advices to people, but but what I can do is I can probably summarize my learning over over my journey or through my journey. Okay, I think I'll have probably two pieces. Okay, one stick to basics. That's that's probably easier said than done. And second thing is that embrace and lead the change because uh, it, it's it's going to happen, right? The way we used to do business probably five uh, five years ago is not the way we are, we are doing business, right? I remember when we did the first blockchain uh, transaction sometime back, both globally and India, the first transaction. You know, we said there is some time away that while we have done pilots, it's still some time away that we will see the commercialization. And now we are talking about commercialization of blockchain transaction, right? So I think it's it's important to embrace the change, and it's not only true for banking. Uh, if you, if you look at any sector, just pick up a mobile, right? I mean, I remember when we had those handled uh, bulky phones, and if you go right back, right, you had those landlines, right? So the transformation in mobile has been exceptional, and not only in the mobile per se, but you know the way they are traded today. I mean, will you believe that 45% of mobiles are today sold on an e-com platform, right? Yeah, so, so 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 it's been a transformation journey. So the way I would say is yes, yes stick to basics, but at the same time ensure that you are embracing and leading the change, which is the HSBC philosophy to do that. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And that's fantastic advice, Akash. I'm sure uh, we have a lot of uh, you know young bankers tuning in uh, onto the credible LinkedIn page. I'm sure they would uh, they would greatly benefit from hearing this. Sure. Look, uh, Akash, it's been an absolute pleasure having you uh, on, on the show. Uh, thank you so much again for taking time out. Uh, it's been personally a great experience working with you over the last two years. And I hope to continue doing that uh, over the next several years and, and see this partnership blossom and grow. Uh, thank you once again, Akash. And uh, I'd love to have you on the show sometime soon again. Sure, no, no, no. it's been great. So like I always say that whether it's discussing business, work or anything else with you, it's always been a pleasure, you know, discussing and ideating with you, right? It's, 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 it's always been something that I've always gained something 
uh, with discussions with you yeah so so Very thank kind. for you inviting me on on the show and and all the best for your series thank you akash thanks bye bye